Erbilia is easily to find, especially you make use of its gravitational dependency like in figure 4.7.1b or you make use of CF to get better atomic orientation like in 4.7.1b. Abscess formation as in 471c with gas producing bacteria is easily discriminated. It is different in 4.7.2 a and b floating reflexes in the hilum vena portae like in a or in the more Peripheral branches like in B are significant for portal gas formations. As a rule, they indicate an abdominal abscess communicating with the portal system, and in static CT scanning, it is as a rule misinterpreted as erbilia and thus leading to false immediate consequences. Positioning to 90 degrees on a side, if so possible at all, is important for flank sections, as here shown in 472C in right-sided position. In 4.7.2D, Biliary bladder, liver invasive in growth, is demonstrated with bubble technology. These are no gas but stone reflexes in different cases in 4.7.3a to c. They are all stable in position, no gravitational movements at all, and they produce typical acoustic shadowing. Four point seven point four A shows wall thickening due to an autoimmune cholangitis responding to steroids in addition. CF studies. Whereas 4.7.4b demonstrates wall thickening in intrahepatical PSC primary biliary cirrhosis. Case 4.7.5 shows an only short intrahepatic biliary distension caused by a malignant focal lesion, here a CCC. The same holds true for case 4.7.6. Malignant changes were proven by ultrasound guided fine needle puncture and subsequent cytology. Case 4.7.7a with the additional use of contrast models was punctured as well. Cytology, however, could not clearly discriminate CC from a gallbladder carcinoma. This was possible in 4.7.7b with marked vessel participation in a space occupying focal lesion. As well in 4.7.7c again please note the grade of local biliary distension and that bilirubin levels were normal in all these examples, not so the levels of the cholestatic enzymes. A last such case is seen in 4.7.7D, 
bilirubin levels were normal in all these examples, not so the levels of cholestatic enzymes. Not always lead so-called typical findings to correct diagnosis. In this patient in 4.7.8, it were lymph node metastases of a cellular carcinoma leading to the finding of the primary. In 4.7.9, knowledge of intercrossing anatomy of the right branch of the hepatic artery was decisive to see this tumor at all. This rare complication of a liver rupture in 4.7.10 happened due to uncontrolled inspiration in an old lady during successful PTCD placement percutaneous transhepatic called angiodrenage. After two months, the lady could be dismissed. An HCC again, not respecting biological borderlines, is shown in 4.7.11. Another case of HCC is shown in 4.7.12a. Please note the limited difference in reflexibility. It is rather deconfiguration to show the focal lesion. Another HCC in 4.7.12b2, only visible by affecting the vessels. This case 4.7.13a reoccurs since its complaints needed to be attributed to much more serious a finding in second look diagnosis than initially. This CCC of the Klatskin typus in 4.7.13b was easily found as well. Note the efficacy from anatomy in CF. Distension of intrahepatic bile ducts, so-called double-shot phenomenon, is rather seen directly than by measurement. Measurements are as non-precise as sounds and smoke. A so to say three-shot gun is depicted in 4.7.13d. Note the acoustic windows formed locally by portal branches, especially in segment 2, and thus ameliorating the visibility of even the arterial branching of glissons trias. Rarely, even metastatic growth, like here in 4.7.14, blocks locally the bile duct system. A side different distension in 4.7.15a due to a CCC of the Klatskin localization type was not drained sufficiently since the plastic stent became upgrade. One lobe usually copes with bilirubin production. In this case, in 4.7.15b, the Klatskin CC itself is not seen. Occlusion of the left main branch of the biliary tree is diagnosed clearly anyhow, leading locally to enhanced moisture. This CCC in 4.7.15c is shown in bubble techniques again. Local biliary obstruction is once more seen 
in 4.7.16 now with the tumor itself. In 4.7.17 A and B, another Klaskin tumor is shown in his typical appearance and control after successfully stenting of both main branches of the biliary tract. 4.7.17c shows a partly highly reflexible CCC of the right liver lobe. Tumor thrombosis are the predominant features of these two different CCCs in 4.7.18a and b the latter with cf again making it more easy to see the tumor thrombus itself sludge filling sometimes affects bile ducts as well as demonstrated in this case 4.7.18 18C. Huge and multilocal focal lesions with the different types of biliary obstruction. These are the changes in this advanced case of a CCC in 4.7.19. A well draining PTCD is shown in 4.7.20a. A really small HCC is depicted here in 4.7.20b, visible mainly due to its invasive growth and to the high impedance structures, hepatic vein blood, surrounding it. Another HCC in 4.7.21 is mainly demasked by its deconfiguration of the caudate lobe, segment 1. In here, in 4.7.22a to b as well, deconfiguration is the main topic in these HCCs as they are compressing the liver hilum, the tumors are compressing the portal vein itself. This again is demonstrated in 4.7.22b in this HCC case and its cut off sign of the vessels with marked dilatation. In this case, 4.7.22c, the HCC is less prominent and thus easily overlooked as compared to the huge liver cyst. A rather seldom differential diagnosis of a cyst is shown here in 4.7.23a and b. The participation of the liver in Morbus Osler easily demonstrated by color flow. Simply a normal ligamentum falciforma as shown in 4.7.23. No true focal lesion in this sense, a reminder only. In 4.7.23d, a schematic drawing shows the small and the big Y of the glisson trials. LHD means left hepatic bile duct. LPV stands for left portal vein and IVC for cava inferior. This does not hold true in 
23E, as demonstrated by CF, it is peripheral arterial hyperperfusion in a liver cirrhosis, giving this so-called pseudo-double shot sign. Such a typical case of liver cirrhosis you see in 4.7.23 F as well, as a common end stage in a long-standing liver inflammation. Here in PVC, primary biliary cirrhosis. This is the picture of another HCC in 4.7.24 as diagnosed by grossly elevated levels of alpha-1 fetoprotein. And here as well in 4.7.25.2 only biliary distension makes this tumor an HCC in the end detectable. This tumor in 4.7.26 was, however, a benign one once it was found incidentally and once it was operated, a peripheral myxoma of the right atrium.